If you've been buying ammo for two months, two years, or even 20 years, in the case of this particular product, you're likely familiar with the Federal Hydroshock, right? Heard of that? It's been around for about 30 years or so, if I recall correctly. It came out in the late 80s. So it's one of these old school options, still available in a variety of calibers and bullet weights. And depending on who you speak with, you're gonna get a lot of different opinions, probably some not so positive, about the effectiveness of this ammo. So just when you thought it might go away, Federal replaces it with something completely new. It's not quite what they've done. In early 2018, they really enhanced the technology of the Hydroshock brand, and now we have the Hydroshock Deep. It's available now in a variety of calibers here in early 2019. We're gonna take a look today at the nine millimeter option, 135 grain standard pressure. Quick overview, break it down, some day and night shots, block shots, multiple shots into clear gel, uh, bare gel, and then the FBI heavy clothing protocol, several shots with that, and then a wrap up. The nine millimeter version of the Hydroshock Deep was released in early 2018 with the 40 and 45 options in 2019. By the way, this is a standard pressure load, not plus P. There are comparisons to the original 135 grain Hydroshock in this review, but I will not be shooting any of those into a block. Both the old and new are listed at 1,060 feet per second advertised velocity, and I will provide you with chronograph readings on both in just a moment. These series of photos will show the older Hydroshock on the left and new deep on the right. There are obvious detectable physical characteristics between the cartridges and the bullets themselves. As for the bullets themselves, the deep is about 15% longer, but there are major differences in the hollow point cavity itself. Also, note that the Deep has a double cantilever, which locks the jacket onto the lead core and provides immense support in preventing jacket separation. As for the original Hydroshock, the lead surrounding the cavity reaches all the way to the nose of the bullet. This is not the case with the Deep, which features a thicker, heavier post in the center of the cavity, with the greatest majority of that cavity surrounded by only the jacket itself. Looking directly into the cavities themselves, the technology and bullet construction continues to be evident. The hollow point cavity is much more spacious, with the center post of the deep not as compressed as in the original Hydroshock. Moving now to chronograph readings, I checked a couple of my primary EDC options along with the original 135 grain Hydroshock. While I'm disappointed to see the gold dot continue to drop a bit below its advertised, I believe these readings to be solid, so I proceeded with the deep chronograph session. From 10 feet, Glock 19 with 4 inch barrel, here are my 5 shots. The average is coming in about 4% below advertised, which is lower than the original Hydroshock in this weight. Recoil is very mild, which is noted in the forthcoming day and night shots. We are ready for the test shots. We have a block of clear ballistics gel. This is 18 by 8 by 8 inches. It is their Spartan block. It is synthetic. It has been calibrated. This is calibrated to 10% ordnance gel specs. It is, uh, this is a recycled block. It's been used once for a 9mm critical duty review in March of 2019. Start out with five shots into the bare block. Quick look at those. Introduce the next protocol and then move on from there. And the results, we have three that stayed in the block. They expanded perfectly from this perspective, and they are in the range of 16 to 17 inches. However, we did have two that passed through. One is lying here on the platform. It bounced off the box. We'll pick that up in just a moment. And then another one is embedded in the box right there in the center of the screen, and uh, you can actually see it. So it's just barely stuck in there. A little bit concerned about that, because now with the clothing protocol, those bullets I expect to penetrate just a bit deeper. So let me get that set up for you, introduce it, and then we'll take the next five shots. Ready for the next protocol, and before we get into that, the three shots that stayed in the block have been marked. There you go. Bullet on the board removed, and also I took the one out of the box. So somewhat of a clean slate. The FBI heavy clothing protocol, you can see what I'm using here. Generally, when you're looking at professional test results, 
penetration on shots using that protocol is deeper. We'll see if that is the case here. Five shots, 10 feet. I kind of led into that, didn't I? But I had a premonition that could be a possibility. One stayed in the block on that round. It's already marked at about 16 and a half inches. The other four are lying exactly where they stopped, which was just bouncing off of the box and not flying across the garage. That tells me that the greatest majority of their energy was expended in the block. And that is a good thing. All are perfectly expanded, by the way. So it is the Hydroshock Deep. It is marketed to penetrate 50% deeper than the original Hydroshock. So perhaps we should not be too surprised by this. Let's move on to the wrap up. The first task was to tag these relative to the protocol, which produced the following data points. First, the bear gel shots. Average penetration is based on those that remained in the block, but I also had to account for those that exited, which leaves us with an open-ended average. Expansion is very consistent across the group, and there is zero evidence of jacket separation or the jacket being stressed. Moving on to the heavy clothing shots, penetration, as anticipated, was a bit more, and some people will discredit these on that aspect alone. I certainly respect that sentiment. The average expansion of this group is nearly exactly the same as those from Bear Gel. Retained weight was determined after removing the denim fragments visible here. If you strictly adhere to the FBI's handgun penetration protocol of 12 to 18 inches in ballistic gel, based on these results, you might eliminate the Hydroshock Deep from your self-defense options. On the other hand, if you choose to think outside the box of control testing parameters and consider real-world street obstacles, this might be the ticket. As I noted, there wasn't much energy remaining on the pass-through shots. Otherwise, they would have penetrated the backstop box a few inches or ricocheted and bounced into the far corners of the 10 Outdoors 9 testing facility. Whether or not you are sold on this ammo, Federal has most definitely given the old-school Hydroshock a new millennium makeover that could indefinitely extend the shelf life of this established brand. Thanks for watching.